ladies. And just in case you're offended by being called guys, welcome to Deconversion Therapy, the podcast. This is Bonnie and Karen, who also welcomes all non-binary. Oh, oh, so I don't. <laughs> and gender that's fine. fluid. No, that's fine. Great. Um, Sure, just started out with making me <laughs> the jerky one. That's fine. Um, so welcome to the podcast. Um, I will I will start out by telling you that I have cried twice today. So there's a chance that we might hit three oh, good. if we get into certain subject matter. That's just how it's happening lately. The water is just pouring out of my eyeballs when this people say exciting. nice things. Yeah. So um so we want to say thank you for all of the places that you guys find us and um that is including our private group on Facebook which is by request to join and then Karen grants you access. Yep. Just um, look up on Facebook under groups look up deconversion therapy. You'll see us yeah. and just yeah, just request and it's to a join. Nice, yeah, it's a nice, safe place to talk about stuff. It doesn't even have to be funny. It's better if you did, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, Matthew McConaughey reference, just yeah. in case. Eh, whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, but people share some really good stuff there, and people are not alone with their families that want them to be Christians, and they don't feel like they are. I mean, I was seeing whatever you posted yesterday on Twitter with people who were responding saying that they have to not tell their families that right. they're not in, of the same faith. And that's, I totally get it. I totally get it. But that's such a bummer. It is. You know? It is. Yeah. And that's also deconversion <sighs> therapy on Twitter. Yeah. We've been asking questions lately and like, there's some extreme answers and people who have gone to extreme lengths to hide that they're no longer a Christian and yeah yeah it's like hiding you're a Christian in a rock or something it's, well no there's a lot of death with that so I will just say yeah still difficult emotionally yeah and um oh uh, uh, let's say well obviously Instagram a lot of people are on Instagram it's such a happy colorful place I know that's weird yes. but like to me on my Twitter when I look at my phone like it's black and white it's just words yeah they're pictures but whatever the way Instagram is just set up is so uh, user friendly and happy and fun and then Facebook just flummoxes the shit out of me <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I can't stand it but um but the group is good yeah. our group is good um so those are the places to find us but if you want us to find you we have an awesome newsletter that we're doing two times a month and we put little snippets of things in there and maybe some more stuff that's not quite as always funny. And we're looking for your deconversion stories to share with people in there that maybe aren't funny. We're going to read the funny ones on the podcast because right. that's what this venue is all about. Um, but we did a little recording last night of, of some stuff that's just for the newsletter. And that was fun because... Um, uh, I felt like a turd laughing at something Karen said, and she was saying it uh, about something that's serious, but she has a way of saying things in a very funny way, too. But then I dealt with the guilt all night long of how I laughed at something that was really Good. serious. Good. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there. So, um, Mission accomplished. <laughs> I know. So all last night I was like trying to backpedal and and I realize I've got another friend who does that even at two funerals where she spoke she was like a stand-up comedian right it's it's a deflection it's really yeah but it's really weird that those are the friends that I have well I didn't and even think too. twice about it so that's oh. you know that's another thing that we learn is that um yeah things that we freak or worry about offending someone else, they have moved on to watching reruns of Lost <laughs> while painting their nails. 
So, oh no, last night I was drinking Cosmos. I never drink these days. And our oldest daughter's like, I want to drink. And so went to the old liquor store. So I had Cosmos, too many, and then scrolled through the website, Who's Dated Who, for oh. Jess. I, have you <laughs> been on it? It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. No. You just no. type in, like I said, put in Kevin Costner, and it'll show everyone he's dated. He cleaned up, and so did Naomi Campbell. It's really weird about... You're using funny words to say they (laughs) dated a lot because (laughs) earlier today you said they raked them in (laughs) and they cleaned up like they're coins to be distributed for each mate you're with. That's right. But like some, I'm like, oh, I don't remember those two dating or, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I just did that most of the night. Well, the one that I will always be baffled by is uh, Val Kilmer and Cher. I can sort of see it. Of course, mine was Jamie Foxx and um, Katie Holmes? Dawson Creek. Katie Holmes. Katie Dawson Creek. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's so many in there that I'm like, wow, I did not know that. I forgot that. I wasn't paying attention. I don't care. But Oh, you know what? You probably weren't in the supermarket reading the cover of the National Enquirer as much as I was about Katie and Jamie. Maybe. There you go. Yeah, that's the only way I know about the people dating these days. And um, um, oh, speaking of, did you know, you knew Colin Jost on uh, SNL yes. on the weekend update is married to Scarlett Johansson, yes. right? Okay, a friend of mine didn't know that, and I thought, well, I guess I wouldn't have known it either if I didn't see him get made fun of <laughs> ad nauseum, <laughs> right? <laughs> like on <laughs> SNL or <laughs> Seth Meyers. But um, so he's from Staten Island, and they showed last night on Seth Meyers the little card, and it says his last name is Jost, J O S T. It said Jost married. <laughs> And they had oh, a picture okay. of the Staten Island Ferry and right. like cans, cans, <laughs> dragging <through> the water, <laughs> polluting. But Seth, I just love how shitty guys like that are to one another. Because Seth goes, "If you can't tell by Colin's gold chain, he's from Staten Island." <laughs> and he seems so not Staten Island. If we're being right. stereotypical. Well, he's not Pete Davidson, who seems exactly like Staten Island. (laughs) Right, exactly. All right, so we're picking up here because we just lost connection, and we're back. Or Um, I deleted you. (laughs) One of the best ones was the thing that you put on Twitter today, uh, what shows as a Christian you know, subject of your family's rulers were you not allowed to watch? Um, when you were a kid growing up. And it makes me realize um, we have a really cool, diverse group of people watching this because the era of television shows that people answered about were all over the place. Right. And they might just be (laughs) Twitter followers or when people retweet and they see it. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, and they might not listen to the podcast at all. So we're going to call you out and answer. <laughs> we're going right. to read all the answers right now. <laughs> um, but apparently, that's so Raven was something they couldn't watch. Yeah, I had What's heard that of that about? one. Because that about? Um, one, people do not like, well, my parents wouldn't let me listen to people who were had attitude or were snarky or yelled at each other, like all in the family. So I think Raven's the oh, okay. same, and she had, like, magical powers. Did she? Yeah. <laughs> Did some, she? Okay. Some kind of something. And oh, the same so... for Wizards of Waverly Place, Pokemon. Right. But Care Bears was another big one, and the Smurfs. That just kept coming up over and over. So let's see. Anything where you use your imagination is Correct. kind of <laughs> just chopped off at the knees. Um, 
I, I was telling Karen yesterday that back in the day, I was allowed to watch TV shows that she wasn't, mm -hmm. including Soap, which was this awesome comedy on ABC after Three's Company, which she was not allowed to watch either. Yeah. And that's Although fine. I did end up watching that, and I don't know how or when or what. I don't feel uh -huh. like I snuck it. I feel like... Something. Because it was on after Laverne and Shirley, and if they didn't catch you right. at the nine o'clock mark, you got a little bit of you know, yeah, a maybe peek I at what it. was happening at the Regal Beagle in Santa Monica. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the Regal Beagle, <laughs> such a great name for a bar. But um, soap, I was telling Karen yesterday, like when when I was little and watching soap, I thought Billy Crystal as this gay character was really funny, and he was of a higher moral character than the other characters on the show. And so I was like, I don't know. Somehow I was like, oh, he's gay. There you go. Right. And, yeah. and I suppose that that maybe had something to do with um, me never thinking, oh, my God, a gay person. How awful. Yeah. You know? And, and I, I never don't know thought what... that. I just thought I love Pray them. for them. They're going to hell. And that's so sad. <laughs> so <laughs> right. I, it still had that part to it. Um, yes. And I also was telling Karen last night that I think part of the thing that made me the saddest in my childhood was the day that we came home. It was the night that we came home and turned on the TV and expected the Partridge family to be there. And they had been canceled. And I did not know why they left me. Right. Like, why it's did so my sad. surrogate family leave? Yeah. And maybe that's when it all went to hell. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my child. <laughs> <laughs> that's when he started doubting God. I get it. Well, yeah. It, I wasn't I mean, allowed to watch Maud or any of that ilk, you know, that was going around at that time. And I bet that that influenced other shows because I never liked Golden Girls, where everyone's like, oh, I love the Golden Girls. Which are you? I'm like, uh-uh, because Maude was on it. And I right. carried, like, something subconsciously. So I never, mm -hmm. you know, watched that either. But um, it, it wasn't like we were like, you can't watch that. But it was definitely... Don't watch that. <laughs> so maybe yes, maybe yes. But some people, they didn't have TVs or they, you know, like it was pretty severe. And you think how that affects you over time. Yeah. It's a really bad and I hate to say it, stupid call for parents to tell children they can't watch something because... Satan might get a hold of them, or it's not Christian, or it has bad influences, because that's one of the simplest things you can then access and then find out, oh, nothing happened to me, you know? And or that's it's it. a great chance for a parent not to be lazy and have a conversation about it. True. Yeah. But it's, you but know, it's really going to knock you out of your your held beliefs that they were putting you in just because it's so easy to dispel. It's not like, hey, Karen, don't go practice witchcraft or get drunk or like those things are much harder to access and do and get scared of. But hey, don't watch the Smurfs. Just <laughs> go over to your friends, see it and go, I, I'm still all right. <laughs> I still didn't think the Smurfs was that clever. Nope. But, um, oh, the other one that is clever that a bunch of people mm -hmm. weren't allowed to watch was The Simpsons. Oh, well, that's weird. But, I think, yeah. But it's advanced and, um, and... I think it, you know... intelligent. Right. Subversive. It probably, it probably sparked too much uh, critical thinking <laughs> yep. for... Um, Ugh, but can you imagine the blandness of what they were allowed to watch? So someone Ugh. wrote that s someone came to fix, I am making this totally up, I can't remember it, but it was like someone came to fix something at our house and left 
a seven minute video on how to, you know, fix a toilet or something. And we would watch that. <laughs> When the, and I'm like, no, that can't be it. <laughs> but but I, remember I told you about the writer that we met with who uh, his his father would only let them watch TV on election nights when they were tallying the results. Right. And that's the only night he got to watch TV of the whole year or I guess every two year cycle. Oh, man. So maybe a video <laughs> maybe how to fix a toilet was exciting. Because I remember being overseas and you would get nothing on television yeah. and there was one show I think at in Australia at that time that was American and it was um some kind of it had the gross Baldwin brother. And they were all cowboys. No, there's one. Stephen. (laughs) Stephen, the Republican, crazy, irate Christian. I watched that show. No one watched it in the States, but I was like addicted, Mm -hmm. you know. Oh, I got to watch it because that's all I had. And you can imagine. So we were over in Italy on some school program during this crazy heat wave summer, and it was miserable. And once you found an air conditioned place, you wanted to stay and you didn't want to go outside or move. So I would stay real still and I had one magazine to read. And I was like, well, I'm going to read every freaking article in this magazine. And that's when I read about Quentin Tarantino in Vanity Fair. And I was like, well, this sounds like an interesting character. And Reservoir Dog sounds like a very interesting movie. And um, I'm so happy that I accidentally read about Quentin Tarantino or I wouldn't have become a big fan. Yeah. I don't like and him his, as a person, but that's oh, all right. Pulp Fiction was such good storytelling. But yeah. anyway, yeah, so uh, when you're when you're stuck <laughs> and you only have what <laughs> people totally. left behind. And oh, that God. must have made, like, Eastern Christmas pageants magic. Like, ooh, it's like a <laughs> right. movie, a TV show right in front of maybe, my eyes. Maybe that's their whole goal is let's deprive them so much that even... A song about an invisible dog (laughs) is exciting when you go to church. (laughs) Our shitty presentation. What was the invisible dog one? Germs. Germs. Yeah. Look it up. And if you think about it, germs are invisible. They are. All right. Uh, So this episode, we're talking about something else invisible that is been revealed and that's that we got another jesus and we've wanted to do this one for a while this one is we've got another jesus that's right (laughs) this one is not the siberian jesus this one's the australian jesus because at least this jesus knows warmer weather is a good thing okay do the thing where i say it and then you respond aussie 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 uh, oi, oi, oi. Yep, that's There's, what you're supposed to do at sporting events. Or you can do it like, you know, anywhere that you see an Australian, you know they're there, and you just yell it, and they respond, and that's like, hey, there's another Australian here. And I know that because my husband's Australian. That's what you do. Um, so I guess that's how you conjure this Jesus if you want <laughs> want to pray to him. I don't know. Okay, his name is A.J. Miller, and I guess he's 50-something now, uh, and he's married to a woman named Mary. She mm-hmm. calls him Jesus, and it's hilarious. Uh-huh. I'll tell you about some things I read and watched And uh, he calls her Mary, because it is her name, but he also says she's Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. So you read one article, but you saw pictures. I saw pictures, and I watched some video. Oh. So how would you describe physical attributes of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who walks? Aussie Jesus looks like Keith Urban and mm-hmm. a Gib brother blended right. together. He's 
he's slim and fit and he's got that light brown hair with a little bit of a, a length and a swoop mm-hmm. and and he has a pleasant face yeah. mm-hmm. um, and he's got the overbite that is pronounced with the big teeth which makes for a great happy smile which I think might contribute to why people say he's charismatic because I think the minute anybody tells you they're Jesus, their charisma goes out the fucking window for me. Right. But that's just that's just because I think that of the option, Lord, liar, lunatic, this guy is two of them. There's one he's not. <laughs> That's my that's my opinion. But yeah, he looks like Barry Gibb and Keith Urban got together. Right. But maybe the more negative qualities of them, if there is one. Cuz I told you I was standing next to Keith Urban once and he's a, he's a very um tiny shiny man. <laughs> yes. He he's like tiny in all aspects uh-huh. and just like I don't know if he shaves his arm, but I just remember like... Just one arm? (laughs) Yep. The one closest to me, I could not see the other. But I was just like, he's very shiny. Just... Uh Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Nicole Kidman would not have anybody not shiny. Yeah. True. Um, Okay. But he's very frosty-haired, Keith Urban. But this guy's just... You know what? He's just... You wouldn't... You wouldn't think that he was going to murder you in a parking lot. No. He's got he, a, he you might, know, he's got he, a good presence. Right. He, to me, he looks like um, an 80s sort of surfer guy. And yeah. he lives sort of in the country in Australia. And, you know, the way we think of country folk here in the U.S., it's the right. same in Australia where they're a little bit outdated with their clothes. So he wears very 80s clothes all the time, likes to be barefoot, um, looks like a surfer guy, sort of feathered hair. And yeah. then his wife, I think, is 15 years younger, and she's really pretty. Brunette. Yeah, 15 years younger. Okay. Oh, yeah, we'll um, get to all the goodness with that I one. guess you, I don't know if they have babies. I'm, gonna, I'm sure you're going to tell me. To back up. A.J. Miller was born in a manger in Australia. Um, <laughs> no. But on uh, A.J. Miller says it, it wasn't until he was about uh, 30 that he started having really intense emotions where he was remembering being tortured. So he now says he can remember feeling he was Jesus ever since he was two years old. But it wasn't till he was about 30 that he really had started having these flashbacks that yeah. were horrendous and that he would shake so violently for about six months while he was going through this, quote, realization that people actually thought he had Parkinson's. Um, and even his son, who thinks his son's grown um, mm-hmm. and from another marriage, actually thinks he's Jesus and said he was so distraught that I know he was Jesus because he would stay in bed crying and saying, I don't want to be Jesus, you know, like knew how heavy this mantle he must carry is going to be. So the difference between him and Siberian Jesus is that this guy says, he, you know, he he isn't like Jesus come back to earth. He's always, he's been here for 2,000 years. Who? Australian this, Jesus? Australian Jesus. He's no. been here the whole time. He hasn't. Bonnie, <laughs> the doubt is what is going to hold doubt. you back. Because, because... Um, somebody on some documentary asked him to show him the nail holes, and he goes, I can't because it's a different body. Right, so right. What so, does that mean? Yeah, so he feels that he's been in different bodies but stayed okay. on Earth for these 2,000 okay. years. And he remembers, 
he got to meet Aristotle and Socrates. He, you know, he remembers all these things that you can also find in history books. Um, right. Because he lived through them, obviously, and remembers <laughs> all of it. One of the awesome things that I remember Ricky Gervais saying is, oh, okay, all of these people who believe in reincarnation, no one ever is just reincarnated from a normal guy. It's always a queen or somebody famous. Exactly. <laughs> and sure. they never talk about, like, hey, let me tell you who I met in that lifetime. <laughs> Someone you will never have heard of. Um, yeah, exactly. But I will say that I have had some dreams that are very powerful that have stuck with me for years and years. I've had the dream where I'm pregnant mm -hmm. and everybody at church, I'm afraid <laughs> that they are going to find out. Yeah. This has not happened to me, but mm -hmm. I've had that dream before enough times where it feels like a real memory. Right. Yeah. Um, and what was the other dream that I had? Um, oh, I did dream that I met Robbie Williams. That yeah. did not happen to me. But in right. my mind, I remember the details of it so much. Did you want the two dreams to be combined in some way? No, <laughs> did not. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um <laughs> I'm here See what you're trying to imply there. Robbie Williams, baby. <laughs> but I mean, memories can come from places that aren't real. Correct. And but they that, feel like it. Yep. Yeah, because as we know, and you and I are talking and uh, thinking about, emotions are not reality. And so. What? I know. So <laughs> my therefore... rage is real. <laughs> I'm gonna find out how real it is. So this guy, yeah, I guess he took a while as he was, you know, realizing that he was Jesus. Um, he was actually an elder in the Jehovah's Witness Church, but they had a falling out, and he was, what's the word for JWs? Not excommunicated. But shunned? Or, not, um, shunned. It's not shunned. It's, they were, you know, but it they is were shunned. let go. He was let, let go. go. <laughs> uh, and supposedly he, well, he was married to a woman named Cherie, who I tracked down research-wise. And he cheated on her with someone, I mean obviously super hot because her name was Karen <laughs> and that broke up the marriage among other things and so you know he, why it broke up the marriage because she needed to speak to the manager <laughs> <laughs> and he's like well I am Jesus so it all worked out he also worked in IT which is really good because if you sh you should see the shit of pictures <laughs> I looked through about all their IT issues with their videos and their this and that that they do. I, anyway, they put out a newsletter and there's about 45 pictures of just wires. I don't know why they think that would be interesting <laughs> to people, but I think maybe they're they trying colored? to say, help the us. Wires? <laughs> what? Are they colorful? <laughs> no. The wires? <laughs> no. Okay. I know. Um, <laughs> All right. So, so he was a Jehovah's Witness guy, mm -hmm. and they said no more. Correct. And they disenfranchised him or whatever their terminology is. Right. And then he just started hanging out, uh, being a I, farmer. I think. I don't think he was a farmer. Um, okay. He did some IT and property management or property the. The property development, but this okay. is about the time he was realizing he was Jesus, and he went through like these very bad emotional breakdown. Oh my gosh, I think I'm Jesus. Stay in the bed for weeks, shaking, and his mother. Um, I think not only did she like report him or something to a psychiatrist but also the authorities because yeah. she's like something's wrong with you and right. the way he tells it after a while 
she was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. You're normal. But I would like to hear from her, actually. Hmm. Or and maybe then he... <laughs> he started, he, you know, he talking some... with people. <laughs> okay. And um, reaching out, doing doing some lessons that sort of combine all all your favorite things, uh, Jesus himself, um, and... Uh, all my favorite things, including yep. what... Uh, so, he, so he gives lessons to people and yeah, sermons. He, he, he uses a whiteboard, and he actually writes, I'm Jesus, deal with it. No. And people laugh. Okay. Yes. Because most of the followers that come... Like he said, you know, either you believe me or not, that's mm -hmm. not up to me to make you believe and all this shit. But what they do is they really teach, you know, some good things because Nexium yeah. and everywhere else, I mean, you can teach some good shit. It's totally fine. The um, teachings of Jesus were great. And this isn't even those. These are like how to get your emotions aligned with this and that, or what is sin, or, you know, just yeah, practical help stuff. Uh, help with getting through life is really <laughs> a nice thing to teach. So does, does he fit the bill of um, the cult leader who is somehow uh, rounding up people for self-serving purposes? Like... I don't know, having a lot of sex with a lot of ladies or having a lot of money. So that it's a yes and a no. So after he left his wife, I think he dated a bit. And because he was <laughs> Jesus, he's really into finding where your soulmate is. Okay. So um, he... Did he stay in one place and let the soulmates just kind of... Uh, circulate and come to him or did he actually go seeking them well the one he's with now her parents came to some lectures thought they were mm -hmm. interesting invited him over to their house that's where he oh, met wow. the current mary mm -hmm. and then later he told people i think she's my soulmate i think she's mary magdalene mm -hmm. and she heard that from her parents and then i guess she started going oh my gosh i have memories too yeah i was from what i was reading like oh then she was on board right and saying yep yeah so, so he must know who's vulnerable now i do like the interview where he was being interviewed by a gotcha journalist who said is it true that you've also told other women you thought yeah. they were Mary Magdalene? Right. And he went, uh, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. One. Just Isn't one. One other one, one too many. I think that's enough Mary Magdalene's, <laughs> not to mention. Two is too many. You know, Mary Magdalene was a reformed prostitute or sex worker, though they would call it that in the day. So I'm wondering how the sexual, let's just say intercourse, would be once you're married and you're just like, well, I know you know tricks. Try and bring those Stop. up out of your past. Oh, I bet. Cause Try to remember those. <laughs> yep. They're very into oh. digging up memories. So uh, I watched a longer video, and it was sort of disturbing because the, this journalist went ahead, and he had the nice sort of blank but pleasant face every time they said ridiculous shit. But he followed them. They gave him access to stuff. They said, you have to look at... We have to be able to look at your film, though, at the end. Oh, and he was like, that's sure. fine. Let's do it. But he interviewed people like Mary. He interviewed mm -hmm. Mary, and she was talking, and 
She's like, I knew it was real because I began to have memories of Jesus. And she starts breaking down. And it's like painful to watch. She said, Mm -hmm. I remember being there when he was being tortured and hung and how devastating it was to see it happen. And then they interviewed this other guy who calls himself Cornelius. He seems just like a working laborer type guy, salt Mm -hmm. of the earth, probably very emotional, but rugged at the same time. And he believes he was around and was there during Jesus's first century life. Also. Also. Okay. And... He starts crying. And I mean, these are like racked, very difficult cries to watch. Then there's another guy that is in his circle who, again, he's like, every time I think of Jesus and he starts crying. Yeah. And there's obviously some sort of um, one of their things is. You know, feeling emotions, letting emotions out that are of torture and are of very painful things. I mean, the Cornelius guys, like, I remember this happening to me and that and being tortured and being raped. And I mean, it was like violent things he thought he remembered. And so he was shaking while telling them. So... The people who go through this, whether they have mental issues or they've been brainwashed in a way, Mm -hmm. they're too delicate to leave his side, obviously, now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I was thinking is all of, if you think of a 30-year-old who grows up in church, think how many reenactments they are possibly, that they possibly could have been exposed to from church. You know how we've seen right. them on video of of Jesus dragging the cross and we've seen, you know, totally cornball versions of it. Mel Gibson. But, yeah. But some of them are more emotional than others and when you're there in person, you mm-hmm. know, you're going to have a what if you saw that when you were three? Yeah, you maybe you have a memory of something, but you don't realize it was a reenactment of something you saw when you were right. too young to figure out what you were looking at. Um, I feel bad because they... Um, well, I shouldn't feel bad. We should just continue being light <laughs> about it. <laughs> Never mind. No. Yeah, we'll dip in um, and out. Yeah, it's... You know, it's sad that these people are going through this, but what they have combined Jesus and all the Bible with is what they like to call mediumship. So they are totally into the whole uh, speaking to the dead and their spirits around you and this and that. So it opens, it it sort of casts a wide net because then there's a lot of, different people who come to them like, hey, I think I see spirits and I have since I was a kid. And so, you know, there's also people who think they're mediums as well as people who follow him. Um, and it's, Which, and, and you know what? You, I, I think I've told you this before, but there was some program on years ago where there was this little two- or three-year-old kid remembering all sorts of things about a flight that he had been on right. I know when that. he was a pilot yeah. in World War II. And I can't, there's no way that kid knew that. And I think, you know what? I think there is something to be said for reincarnation. I'm still a skeptic, but (laughs) but at the same time, I watch those shows where like a medium drives an Uber and picks up people and on camera tells them things. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That 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 Google one with Gwyneth Paltrow. I believe that one. Yeah, I don't know what the hell's happening. Um, Right, but but I at least say I don't know. Right. I say I don't know, but I think it's human behind it. But it's at the same time, like these people who are going 
through and seeing things, they are already shunned by their family. So they're already in this desperate, you know, to situation. Connect. But everyone Wanting that to gets, connect to people. Yeah. Yeah. So this other thing that they believe that I actually now do believe because it's very convenient, any illness that happens to you Mm -hmm. or any bad thing is the result of your parents. (laughs) Sign me up. (laughs) Great. This is the one my mom will listen to. (laughs) Right. So I guess Jesus getting hung was God's fault. But they take it to the extreme. And, you know, this one poor guy whose um, child, they had a stillbirth. He's like, and now I realize it was my fault. You know, and you're like, this what is bullshit. Like, it's so, all of it is very um, emotionally, mentally dangerous. You know, people are like, oh, this guy's all right. But what he's doing to individuals, it's not like he's hoarding guns, but he's just making people believe really harmful things that include if you're starting to feel and hear God and Jesus telling you that the person you're married to isn't your soulmate, you should leave them. So there's a bit of that. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. Which is... Yeah. Um, I guess you can't just be Jesus without sharing (laughs) your philosophy. Yeah. Can't you just be Jesus and go fix computers? Right. He said something really good because people are like, okay, so um, can you do any miracles? Let's see some. And he says, no, I can't. I couldn't in the first century either until I became older and one with God. And right now I am not yet one with God because I have more memories to unearth. So he puts it off in a very convenient, you know, argument, which is true. Um, Although if he had the Gnostic Gospels, he would have known (laughs) <laughs> that junior Jesus was still doing miracles <laughs> back in the day. Um, and then his other thing, like people would say, okay, so did you walk on water? And he said, nope. And he's like, I didn't turn the water into wine either. Those were <laughs> fabricated in the Bible. I did heal people of limbs and blindness and he's like but i never turn water into wine that was from roman mythology that they put in the bible because they wanted to convince people who were in that thought process you know who believed Ooh, that that was interesting yeah that yeah. was a familiar story to them but i never actually did it and i'm like hmm i will okay. give you that one I will give him that one because that means that the Bible isn't all true. Exactly. And that's what he's saying about that. So maybe I like him more. Right. I mean, his shirts are obnoxious, but I mean, it's fine. (laughs) But I don't think he has a bunch of followers like a cult or hangers on. I think think in the article that I read, it said something about, um, well, there were some people who moved here and bought property close to me to be close to me, but they've moved away. I know. I know. I'm fascinated. That's what I... Jesus isn't a good neighbor. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff. He's always so (laughs) self-righteous. His teeth are too big. I find it fascinating. I think it's ebbing and flowing because... And now, right now, ebbing is what I think, because um, it would show like halls almost filled with people who would listen and come to the lectures Uh and they would be flown around, you know, the world to do different things. And they had a lot of YouTube, you know, videos, which I'll tell you about. But you also have that they have their own website. It's called Divine Truth. And they post their financial stuff. It is not very good. 
Jesus <laughs> right, is right. only <laughs> making about three hundred and fifty dollars a year. Maybe that's tax. What? I don't know what is happening. It's not good. Mary, nothing. The quote church or lack thereof or whatever it is, you know, was in the two hundred thousand, but they still were in debt by all their speaking engagements, so they say. Hmm. But attached to this, Mary writes a newsletter. Okay. Mary's newsletter, her last one, was really, to me, uh, sad in a way that it's like, okay, we haven't been in touch in a while, but I'm going to write. And, you know, what she writes is really intelligently done and articulate and all these good things. But let me see if I can go to the top of it to read you. She writes, you know, hey, we're safe and we're grateful. But this year we've really been snowed under by and she starts listing right away. Audio and vidding, video editing tasks. Computer hardware breakdowns, renovation of our studio because everything's falling apart, high winds and hail damage to our tents and our sleeping quarters, water tanks having leaks, water plum pumps failing, vehicles breaking down, deliveries arriving late with damaged or incorrect parts. So I'm like, Jesus. Come is on. having a day. <laughs> Jesus is not plugged Jesus into is having a bad year. Any kind of um, help, and then it goes right into we have been without volunteer assistance this year. So just Jesus and I are managing <laughs> every detail of our operation without help. And I'm wondering, is that because of COVID or is that because people are starting to scatter? There's some TV show that sounds a lot like this. Or maybe it's a book that I read somewhere where they keep coming back or they've been on the planet for years and years. But as a different. Oh, maybe it's Wonder Woman. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's close. Uh, it's very close. <laughs> but it seems like he combines a lot of the stuff of, yeah, a medium and like intellectual jargon. The sad part is almost all of it. And that children, it shows a little question answer time with the children. They're like, hey, yeah, can, what is plain 22 like? And, you know, plane like 22, all, what is that like? A, a no plane clue. Of existence? I guess I guess it's like if people heard us talking about stuff in Sunday school, but they just came from Saudi Arabia, they'd be like, what are they talking about? But these kids just seem Maybe to Maybe it's a dimension of existence. Yeah, I think it's all that. And then one said, hey, do you know... If my mommy and daddy are soulmates, Aww. and they're just like smiling, and I'm like, this is not very <laughs> healthy. Like, no, they're not. <laughs> right, right. Let Your me parents have are not soulmates, her. and it's not going to be good in a couple of years. He does have doomsday predictions that the earth is going to change, and like Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane and the Gold Coast, like everything that's coastal is going mm -hmm. to be destroyed and like the middle part of Australia will then be beachfront property. Um, he did. Don't we just think that that's a prediction of a lot of people though? Exactly. He did say it would start in 2012 and that has made people oh, okay. question. <laughs> Never give a date. Well, Religious that's it. People. Good that Lord. And that's when people started moving inland where he is because oh, okay. they got scared. And then I guess after that, they were just like, uh, never mind. We're just okay. going to go. So many of these things where somebody claims to be a leader or Jesus or 
uh, uh, you know, or they're, they're having a cult and they've got a whole bunch of followers, the human mind, I guess there are so many gullible people. Give out their, their personal agency. I want responsibility to be on someone yeah. else. He does say he, people are like, hey, you're only one of the people who say they're Jesus on the earth. He goes, I know. I've actually <laughs> had some of the other Jesuses call Uh-oh. me to try and tell me they're me. And I'm like, Ring. okay. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is Jesus. Go for Jesus. <laughs> I know. Do you say, hi, it's Jesus? And uh, I don't know. But Mary's blog who who knew that Mary would one day have a blog? And then I found something on Reddit that really was just a year or two ago. And it's it was a young guy, and he said, hey, I was at a park in, like, Sydney. Here we go. And this guy approaches me and <laughs> tells me he's Jesus and asks me to follow him. No. And come and he said, you know, <laughs> that, you know, hey, he's I'm also Jesus. known <laughs> as A.J. Miller. So it was this guy. And that makes me think they might not be doing as well as they would like <laughs> if he's just shooting his shot at public parks now. Right. I don't know. But I don't think... I, it, it seems to me if it was Jesus, he would just be, by what he was doing, attracting a following, not playing looking hacky for people sack. in the park. Right. Uh, um, exactly. Or And the whole, like, leave your family and follow me. That's kidnapping right there. <laughs> I don't agree with any of it. So that's Australian Jesus. Lots more weird stuff to him. Um, who knows if we'll hear about him in the future. I'm really hoping, I wish I could write to Mary on her blog and be like, blink twice if you need help. Right, if you're okay. Right. <sighs> um, but, yeah, until then, But I, it. in the thing that I read, too, that he said, oh, when I told people, they just kind of stopped talking to me. I don't know, where do you figure out where that line is? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, he doesn't seem like he's going to be hurting anybody. So we're just going to let him and Mary do their thing. Right. I don't, I don't know. know. And I don't know how much the law can do stuff until they really like. If they're see. not a threat to anybody. Yeah. And they just want to hang out. There was a call to the authorities that they heard screaming and children crying on the compound. Then later, the journalist that was talking about it's like, this isn't a compound. And they're right. like, yeah, <laughs> no, that those were people who had been staying with us. And mm-hmm. they just were upset and wanted to get back at us. And I'm like, that's what I want to hear about. Oh, yeah, I want to hear that. I yeah. Know. So if Mm -hmm. anyone in Australia, which we've gotten up to number three there on probably a midnight on a Tuesday (laughs) in the charts, and you hear this and you know anything, please let us know. A deconversion therapy. Somebody's probably got um, an, uh, an interaction with them, an encounter of some sort. That'd be neat. All right, so write those cards and letters <laughs> Send them or to emails. <laughs> DeconversionTherapyPodcast.com. Yeah, we do want to hear more letters uh, and, and, I think and we have funny a few stories. More, yeah, a few more Jesuses to go, Jesus. So Okay, so there was Siberian Jesus, Australian what? Jesus. Yep. Who else? I think there's a Brazilian Jesus. He mm. looks a little boring, but we'll find out. You never know. You got to get your your you know feet wet into a religion to really know what's happening. I'm um, still holding out for whoever can grow a new limb on somebody. Mm-hmm. Then, totally. Then I believe. Right, or just like actually helps people. 
I will be there. I will listen. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for me. You got anything else going on or that you want to say? No. (laughs) (laughs) So we'll see you next week. See you next week. Ciao.